Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to my video with an overview on the Live Letter 23, which just aired this morning, July 10th, 2015, at a, like 7 a.m. EDT. Honestly, guys, this was a super long Live Letter. I spent almost four hours at least talking with Marco, who is our translator. He's been doing the translations for most of the uh, Japanese Live Letters, ones where we don't have official translations. So thank you again to him. Uh, thank you for everything you do for the community. It's great to have somebody who can just do these translations live. You know, we've had plenty of other people too you know don't forget you know uh, slicer still this is over at the bg forums we have signy crow still does them uh when they're available so thank you everyone in the community for taking care of these translations so there was like almost 90 questions i'm not going to be able to go through every single question in this live letter so remember in the description of the video you can find the link to the document on the dream forums you can find the uh the official translation on the official forums as well i'll quickly scroll through that maybe i'm pretty sure we'll cover almost everything here with the with this of unofficial translation so anyway uh before we do that though let's go over the announcements they did these at the end of the show and these are things that just they wanted to announce for example patch 3.05 is launching uh two tuesdays from now on july tw uh, 21st that is alexander savage that is the new scripts for gathers and crafters that's elegant elegant homestones of esoterics that is also the new pvp mode the new map and rules so uh there's probably gonna be other things in there maybe job balance maybe some other sort of little things that we weren't expecting but expect some more things in patch 3.05 uh, Alexander Savage, one of the things coming out, the higher difficulty version of the Alexander raid we have right now. Uh, they also revealed the way the loot system is going to work for Alexander Savage. So it's like old Coil mixed in with Ravana and Bismarck for the way the loot system works. So like Coil when it was initially launched, each area can only be completed once per week. Once you've done it, the loot drops, you exit, that's it. You're done with that, that, uh, that floor for the week. Uh, treasure coffers with gear itself seems like it's not going to be like normal where it's like a token you trade in for gear will appear upon beating a boss however you do additionally get a token automatically for your clear for the week very similar to ravana and bismarck in the way they work now and those tokens can be traded in for gear so it's like a mix of coil and ravana and bismarck uh but basically you complete it once a week you get loot and you also get a token in case your loot doesn't drop for weeks and weeks and weeks on end or if it does loot if it does drop you can buy even more loot uh, the assist feature that was in Final Coil will also be returning. This is the feature where you can bring people who have already cleared it for the week in to help people who haven't cleared it at the cost of some of your loot being removed. So if you bring like one to four people, you only get one treasure coffer. If you bring more than that, you get no treasure coffers. But regardless of how many treasure coffers you get, the people who haven't cleared it for the week in that group will get their token uh, for the week when the clear is gotten. So uh, they're also planning on making adjustments to Alexander Normal. Uh, I have it written down as drop rates. It's mostly just the loot system as a whole. Uh, I'm sure they're looking at people who are having issues, maybe doing 10 runs in a row, never seeing the token that they want. At this point, it's almost like they're going to add a token system for their tokens. So I have no idea what they're planning on doing. Just expect some sort of adjustment to the Alexander Normal drops uh, as the way they are now. The two-year anniversary is happening soon for Final Fantasy XIV since its relaunch with A Realm Reborn back in August of 2013. And just like with last year's one-year anniversary, they are doing a 14-hour live broadcast where they're going to have a bunch of entertainment. They're going to be talking with developers, with art, music, all that stuff. And there will be a live letter at some point during that 14-hour broadcast. So expect that to have more information about Patch 3.1. will be a little bit more than about, what is that, about two months that'll be uh that'll be just after the two month mark for 3.0 so we should be looking forward to 3.1 within the next month to month and a half the moonfire fair is also coming back it'll probably be sometime during that whole two-year anniversary thing not during the 14-hour broadcast but it, it'll be in august so just uh it'll be soon i should say so just be on the lookout for the moonfire fair the Orzia Cafe, it's a bunch of new things about that. If you live in Japan, uh, they're adding a bunch of new coasters, a collectible like stamps that you can get for coasters. And there's going to be one in Yokohama for a limited time with a, with a Merlewood coaster. If you like coasters, then Eorzea Cafe is the right place for you. Uh, before the fall soundtrack, August 26th, you can pre-order it now. It will come with the minion, the Primogs, which is like the Primal Sokens band, but it's the Primogs. They play Primal music. Uh, Carvuncle plushies, those are on sale. And also there is going to be Final Fantasy XIV at Gamescom. So if you're going to Gamescom, check out Final Fantasy XIV there. They didn't say there was going to be a live letter or anything. And I think with it being so close to the 14-hour broadcast, there probably won't be. Just expect there to be Final Fantasy XIV at Gamescom. We'll probably get some new information about something out of there. We always do.
So I just scrolled back up to the top. Like I said, there was near 90 questions for the Q&A. So uh, I'm going to just kind of go through the ones that I thought were important. I'm not even going to do that much commentary on them. Just going to generally share what they are. Uh, they apologized to Mac users because it was a terrible port of the game. And that they're mostly, they were focusing mostly on Q&A about 3.0 and not 3.01, 3.05, or 3.1. Um, they also briefly reflect, reflected on the launch of the expansion, you know, how it went, you know, their thoughts on it, but we don't need to really speak about that. So there are job adjustments coming, a lot of them. I mean, Machinist is the one that most people are looking forward to. That was the, what the main question was about. Uh, but they're, you know, looking at adjusting parameters, uh, making changes to things like Black Mage's Enochian, uh, some changes to Dragoon, some changes to, we'll, we'll, we'll go through them here in a minute. So uh, real quick, though, they are not releasing a new class or job before 4.0. So if we get a new job or any new jobs, it will be in the expansion for 4.0. But, I mean, we just got a bunch of new jobs, so it's kind of early to be thinking about that. Uh, accuracy on healer equipment. They said that it was something that they didn't do at the 2.0 launch, so they decided to not do it at the 3.0 launch. When accuracy becomes more and more of a problem for healers for hitting things like energy drain, uh, then they're going to start adding accuracy to the gear. Yes, you can still miss your spells right now. It's not like it's perfect, but uh, they feel like it's an adequate amount of accuracy just for the sake of what healers are supposed to do. He, he wants you as a healer to feel comfortable hitting the boss, but uh, unless you meld accuracy right now, you're just not going to get anything extra. Um, they straight up said there's probably not going to be any new roles anytime soon, like a buffer or support role. So just expect the trip, the Holy Trinity at this point. I almost said triple triad. Um, they also commented on Warriors DPS, which I thought was interesting. They actually said it's part of the Warriors role to offer high DPS. Like that is a part of the role, especially with the slashing debuff. So, um, they say that they may not put out as much damage when they are main tanking, but when they are off tanking, they want warriors to be like, okay, I am big DPS. They also very, very interestingly said that if you have a slashing debuff on and a Dark Knight is played correctly, they have comparable DPS to the warrior. Yeah, except for the fact that they run out of TP in two minutes when they use blood weapons. So hopefully that means we'll see some sort of adjustment to TP. But they never, they didn't mention anything about Dark Knight TP issues. They, there's no, they didn't answer any questions about it. So uh, they also commented on the fact that Warrior's Defiance effect doesn't get a benefit from Tetragrammaton or Lustrate, and uh, and it's they've explained this before. It's because there's a difference between heals based on spells and heals based on abilities. Spells are cast while abilities are separate they're, they're just different things if you look under the name of an ability on the tooltip it'll say whether it's a spell or ability if it says spell defiance benefits from it if it says ability defiance isn't affected by it um they also briefly commented on the new mp cost being high and it's just they're just balancing things out still so please look forward to it uh bards they commented on the play style minuet you're supposed to be using it when you can stand still when you can't stand still turn off minuet and also uh Pain or Peen is very selective use ability. They don't see it having a widespread use, but it was another one of those kind of niche abilities that you will find a situation for it at some point. It's just it's not going to be something you use super often. Machinists, they barely said anything. They basically just said get good. They said get good pretty much with a lot of this stuff. Uh, very briefly spoke about how is the optimal way to play Machinists and to master those three things. Keeping buffs up, dealing damage with procs, and timing your wildfire well. And then he just said, let's move on. <laughs> Uh, the vanity system for Eggies, they are still working on it, but it is something they are actively pursuing. The ability to use an Eggie of a different appearance. Like, let's say you're using Ifrit Eggie, but you wish it looked different. So instead, use Leviathan Eggie. does all the exact same things as Ifrit Eggie. Same potencies, same abilities, just different animations. They're working on those attack animations, but just know that it is something they are actively working on. Enochian, uh, they want to make adjustments to it because they've noticed that Black Mages are beginning to omit Thunders from their rotations at points because of the Enochian timer. So they want to make some sort of adjustment to it, but they wouldn't go into detail just what that adjustment was yet. Uh, Dark Knight Skill Living Dead, they said they might adjust it. They want to see how it works and how it uh, ends up operating in Alexander Savage. Uh, they seem to think that the burden on the healer is too large, and considering it's supposed to be some sort of defensive cooldown that you use, and it's supposed to prevent other people from needing to use uh, their cooldowns, it seems like in most cases, people healers are using their cooldowns to ensure a Dark Knight survives through Living Dead. So it's almost like it's forcing you to double dip into healing cooldowns versus uh, healing and tank cooldowns in order to effectively just stay alive. They... It's that's creating a higher burden on the healer, so they may look into it, but nothing planned yet. 
Paladin. Uh, so they have basically the comment about Paladin was it's very difficult to keep Halone and Goring Blade up while also fitting Royal Authority into their rotation. So Yoshi P said that you don't always need to have the Rage of Halone debuff up. Certain enemies don't necessarily benefit from the strength debuff. So uh, it's more about me knowing when you need to have Halone up and when it's okay to just go straight into Royal Authority. Uh, it's apparently something they really want you to learn how to manage. Astrologian changes. The cards themselves are going to be getting changes. Their potency seem to be staying the same specifically with things like benefit benefit to helios asuna all those abilities will probably remain the same but the things that make astrologian unique may see some changes because that's where they feel the job has some weaknesses specifically with the card system with shuffle they didn't mention anything about light speed or sinistry or maybe the aspected spells um but expect some changes to astro coming sometime in the near future Scholar, Dissipation, they just said that's something they really don't see being useful outside of hardcore raids, and they made this comment about Scholar when they were talking about their new abilities in the first place. So, uh, to continue on with that, they feel like it'll be more useful in places like Alexander Savage. Outside of that, they really don't see it being all that useful. Um, another thing, uh, the fairies, not healing for as much. They said that because of the leveling up curve for, uh, pet, the leveling up curve for pets was very low, and that it was mostly made to scale with gear. So as you get more gear, you may notice that your fairy is becoming more and more adequate of a healer, unlike when you were leveling up and your gear, and your, your fairy didn't seem to be scaling at the same rate your character did. Uh, that's because they took, uh, gear into factor, so just keep that in mind. Um, also, monk adjustments. Meditation. People don't like having to spam it in the middle of dungeons just to get to the five stacks. So they were asking for an instant five stacks. And uh, they said uh, it might make it difficult to balance. So we're not really planning on it right away. Or at all. They said Dragoon's too hard for players. <laughs> <laughs> this was interesting. They were basically commenting on the fact that some bosses literally prevent you from getting to a certain side, uh, which will cause a massive potency loss while under Blood of the Dragon. So the loss of DPS between hitting on the correct side with the new uh, end combo abilities versus not hitting on the correct side will be lessened. I mean, that seems to be most prevalent in places like Ravana, where you can only hit from the flank or the front, and you have these abilities that are random and they are either from the flank or the rear, so it can really hurt the Dragoon DPS. Not that Dragoons were doing bad in Ravana even with that. But uh, expect it to be, this is a buff. Regardless, it's a buff to when you can't hit those positionals in the right way. So, Mudra lag for ninjas. People are complaining it's hard to fit between all the new skills to fit them into the new rotations, especially with trying to get used to Armor Crush. And uh, Yoshi P said it's only been three weeks. Just keep figuring it out. Just keep practicing. So, ninjas, uh, I don't even know why it's Mudra lag. I, it's just just using ninjutsu as a whole, I guess. Mudra lag isn't the right way of putting it. Just using ninjutsu and fitting all the other new skills in at the same time. Uh, let's see. Main scenario quests sometimes give choices, but the choices don't affect the story. That's not going to be changing. The broom quests, they said they're not going to make any more quests like the broom quest. I hope that doesn't mean they're not going to make quests like, uh, like the greatest story never told, because that's basically what the broom quests were, and I'm a fan of those. So, uh, I mean, they weren't, they weren't mandatory. Like, sure, yeah, they were kind of stuck there. I didn't like that they were stuck there in with the other side quests, but, uh, they weren't even really that hard. So, I don't know why they're doing that. Quest of the new areas, the way they were designed, you know, we don't need to go over that really here. Uh, new quests to expand on the characters from the main story. It's going to be new main and side quests for those, as well as continuation on the quest for the Doman children. Uh, quick question about lore, the Ixali and the Fractal Continuum, are those actually the original winged Ixal? And there are going to be quests in the game to sort of explain the origins of Az's Law, so please wait for it. Hi. They went on break at that point, and after this, it was pretty much all like crafting and glamour and repeat questions that we've gotten before. Uh, they asked about the UFO and the Sea of Clouds, and uh, Yoshi P says, you'll find out eventually, uh, or you'll have to go find out yourself. Uh, level 60 dungeons, hard to keep aggro. He's, uh, he's assuming that's an item level issue. Uh, if it turns out that it's an item level issue and not based on the player's skills themselves, adjustments may be made. I'm assuming an item level sink. The Odin Fate is probably going to be getting some nerfs because no one does it anymore, but there are people who still want to do it, so they want to make it doable with smaller parties. Uh, Singularity Reactor Hard Motor, Singularity Reactor Extreme, confirmed. Yes, we will be getting it. The official notes say no comment, but on the live stream, Yoshi Pisa pretty much said, that a, that a new main story specific boss will be getting a, a higher difficulty will be getting a rematch so that could pretty much only mean singularity reactor so we got a confirmation what's the new 24 man raid they wouldn't tell us they'll tell us at the two-year anniversary or give us some sort of hint where they're talking about uh 3.1 more 
Roulette bonuses. People were asking if you could get uh, sort of like a stacking roulette bonus. Like if you miss a roulette for a day because you're somebody who works five days a week and you know you want to just do them all on Saturday. And this has been asked before. If it could sort of be like you have one day's worth of stacks, two days worth of uh, two days worth of bonuses, three days worth of bonuses, all the way up to a total of like seven days worth of bonuses. And I think World of Warcraft does this. At, I think they started doing this at some point. And uh, they said it would be possible, um, but it's not promised. They've they've said the same thing before, so it's. I'll be interested to see if they end up actually implementing it. Uh, Chocobo uh, rank cap not going up. All right. But there's going to be new content with, like, Chocobos and Magitek armors. So expect a few new things coming with your companion Chocobo or the Magitek armors. Some people thought it meant, like, a companion Chocobo. Like, the Magitek could be a companion. But we'll see what they end up doing. Difference between Alexander Normal and Savage for rewards. The item level will be different. The gear will be diable, and there will be some sort of bragging rights feature. With Savage Second Coil, it was a title, but they wanted to be really secretive about it. So I just included could be the title, could be the mount, could be the weapons, which we've already seen are not from Alexander Normal, unless they plan to be added later. Or it could just be something we don't know. They just wouldn't say what the bragging rights were. They want to see if they can actually give experience points from level 50 dungeons in the high level roulette. The, the roulette gives a bonus, but the individual enemy kills don't give anything. So they're, uh, they're doing some calculations and they are planning on implementing it. New Grand Company ranks, they said they're coming eventually, but they want the Grand Company ranks to mean something. Like, not just be like this arbitrary, I'm going up to the next rank, whatever, next rank, whatever. They want it to really be rewarding. So they don't want to implement it until they can make them more rewarding. Uh, and rank ups will not be gotten through just handing in seals, they're going to be gotten through other means. Uh, company chess being put in Ishgard, apparently there's an issue they had with doing that that was causing servers to crash, so they just decided not to do it. When they fix it, they'll see what they, uh, they'll, when, they uh, when they're able to fix that, they'll see if they can add them. For company names will be changeable after creation in 3.1. They might add a minion for Hoche Font. They might also add a, uh, his shield as glamour, and they might also add him as a painting. Are they planning to make medicines more useful? Specifically, they feel that the cooldowns of the medicines are not properly uh, relating to how much stats they give. So you may either see a reduction in cooldown or an increase in stats. One of those two things. Any new easier ways of getting the cute minions like the ones from the new dungeons? They said, no, just, just going to take some effort. You got to go do it. Will Tataru make new equipment for players? Her weaver's gear isn't good enough yet. So maybe one day. Are there any plans to add new designs from games like Final Fantasy Tactics? He said, sure, he loves Tactics. Uh, the hunt is currently the only way to upgrade log gear. They will be implementing new ways to upgrade log gear in the near future, so please look forward to it. Uh, players don't want to go around finding ether currents before they fly. Said they might make some adjustments to the ether current quests, but the 10 where you have to go out into the world and actually find them with the compass, he wants people to really earn flying in every zone. He wants you to explore the zone before you're able to fly in it. Uh, any plans on adding an etherite in the hinterlands? Apparently, originally in uh, development, the uh, Idleshire was actually in the hinterlands. It wasn't a different zone altogether. Uh, I think it was due to probably PS3 limitations that they ended up separating them. They said because of performance issues, so I don't know. It seems like the PS3 is the only thing that couldn't handle that to me. Um, divided because of balance issues. Working on a way to add an exit to Idleshire so you can like click on the etherite and just leave Idleshire right away. Going to implement a special inventory for Glamour. Uh, this is the same every time they ask about inventory. It's no because of due to the sheer number of items and in inventory space, the rate at which data is saved, all that stuff, it's hard to do that. We do have an answer later on, though, that is a bit more in the on the positive side with the inventory, but we'll get to that. Free company airships. Uh, this is something that we'll have to go over with the official notes because I didn't get very good notes on it right here. So remember, just check out the official notes and you should see the uh, right information. Uh, new more gear for gatherers and crafters. Any uh, plans to lower the number of people needed for company crafting? I don't remember what the answer was to that. Uh, Yoshibi was like, gatherers make money at 60. Will you ever be able to become a master in more than three crafts? They said they're monitoring it, but currently they have no plans. Are they going to increase the furniture max for free company houses? Yes, but they want to implement some other features first, like uh, making it easier to travel to the new wards, increase the furniture count. Uh, they also want to make it so you're able to move your house in case you ever want to move. I don't know if that means rotating the house or if that means moving your house from one plot of land to another without the whole, you know, having to remove it and buy a whole new plot of land. Or maybe they mean something like selling the land you have now so that way you can buy land in another place. Uh, something along those lines. I'm sure that they ju they're just trying to preserve the house itself. And finally, they'll look at adding uh, Ishgard housing areas. That won't be anytime soon. Don't expect that for several years. Just saying that they will eventually add Ishgard. They, they're looking at implementing it. Uh, also, the ability to share houses with your eternal bond partners and your 
and the people on your friends list uh, and other people on top of that is coming in 3.1. So yes, if you are married, you will finally be able to share a house with your spouse. Uh, will they ever be able to fly in 2.0 areas? Uh, no, because they don't want to spend the time redeveloping those areas. Will flying mounts actually show them banking on a turn? And they should, maybe if it's possible, but no promises. A baby dragon minion like the ones in uh, Annex Trine? Not at the moment, but maybe in the future. Uh, I don't remember what this question was. Missed it. The answer was yes, though. Will they increase the speed of ground mounts? This was, I don't know why, I typed walking with mounts. Ground mounts. Uh, currently no plans. Be able to glamour your companion chocobo to look like another mount. That means, like, while you have your companion chocobo fighting with you, it's glamour to look like your dragon, for example. They said that would require to add animations for attacking for every single different mount, so probably not. Uh, we'll be able to use the current mounts we have, the flying ones, in the expansions that come later. The answer was yes, of course, you can use them in the old content. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to use them in the new one. If flying is ever a feature in the new expansion zones after 3.0, then yes, they will be able to fly as well. Uh, will there ever be a Dalmel mount? Uh, potentially. Will they add more Final Fantasy XI-esque enemies? Probably. Uh... It, will they be adding a way to e more easily differentiate the difference between a physical and a magical attack? Uh, they basically just said, no, we want you guys to be able to, f to figure that one out. Uh, will companions get more emotes? I think I missed that question in its entirety as well. Will we be able to change the color of the Aura horns or just edit the horn separate from the face in general? They said currently no. If it was possible, they would have done it when 3.0 launched. Will they be adding those monk weapons that look like just gloves or just fists, like the Emperor's new fist kind of deal? They said, yeah, they've mentioned it before. We're going to get afros in 3.1. Will the graphics for the game get even better after DX11? Eventually, but we've only had DX11 for three weeks, so get used to that first. Will they make uh, a graphical enhancement for the PlayStation 4 version because they made DX11? Yes, they will be making graphical updates to the PlayStation 4 version of the game. So this was the more inventory space. Remember when I said that it's difficult for them to add more inventory space? Uh, well, they've actually apparently been doing minor tweaks to the game every single patch to try and alleviate this issue. So eventually it'll get to a point where, yes, they can add more inventory slots, more slots on your retainer, uh, more armory uh, chest slots. So they are working on all those things. They're also planning on adding a feature to your retainer that will allow you to deposit an entire set of gear or withdraw an entire set of gear all at once with the click of one button. Uh, they're also planning on on making macros shared across the account. The only issue is that now people have macros all on different characters, so they need to find a way to properly merge them without causing issues. Uh, sell items directly from retainers to NPCs. That's going to be a new uh, new feature potentially. The TP display is planned for 3.1. Um, however, it's not going to have a number. It's just going to show their TP bar. But, I mean, that's good enough. You can see when their TP is running low. It's not so important that you know the number, just the quantity of how much they have left. Or just a, just a rough estimate, I guess. Um, can you enlarge bubble text for people with 4K displays? Uh, maybe, but it might be ugly and pixelated. Will more etherites be... Uh, with more etherites in the game, can we get more favored destinations? Maybe. Sometimes you see a child Makote in the new areas. Can we be kids too? And they said no because of legal issues. That means exactly what you think it means. So no, we cannot be children characters. Uh, Windows 10 and Final Fantasy 14, currently there's no critical issues with it. They're still monitoring it, but they are hoping to have it able to launch for Windows 10 sometime in the near future. 3.1, launch date still a secret. Yay. Uh, will retainers be able to become the new jobs? Currently, no, because they can only become classes, but in the future, they will be able to become the new jobs. They understand, I guess, some people may just leave a job at 50 and go level one of the new jobs, and that locks them out from retainer content. So, uh, yeah, they'll probably be able to do it. Patch 3.0, is there anything that changed in A Realm of Born that players didn't notice? If there was, Yoshi P wants you to go find it yourself. I guess that's just like with uh, with uh, Edda in the cities just disappearing. Like, I don't want to go find that. Uh, there was a Yoshida interview with Famitsu that wasn't mentioned here. They said that there's just it's just more like a direct interview, not about the game at all, just about Yoshida himself. Uh, they don't know if they'll publish that in any way, shape, or form. 3.0 soundtrack is going to be released, not yet, but soon, TM. Option to turn off battle music while still hearing the background music to like a zone or a dungeon. They're working on that. That's going to come later. EU data centers, if they stay on track, will be ready for 3.1. At the latest, it'll be by the end of the year. So we'll see. It'll either be between 3.1, which we're expecting to be either probably be late September, if not early October. Um, that's my guesstimate when it'll be at least. Um, if it doesn't get by then, it'll definitely be within the next month or two after that. And uh, then they ask Yoshi P why he likes tactics, and he says well, he likes tactics, and not, and people like grapes. 
Uh, it's difficult to find NPCs and quest points for the quest in the Turning Mists. Somebody actually did complain about the Moogle quest, I'm assuming. That's what that uh, is referring to. And there's the glamour for Horsefront Shield. And I don't, I don't know why I took the time to cover all of the questions that were here, but it's honestly not even all of them. There's a few more in the official notes, which aren't really scaled properly right here because I have it cropped. But uh, there are official notes as well, so be sure to check out the official forums. A lot of questions. Let me know if you actually liked a lot of these questions. I mean, they weren't bad questions. They were questions that people honestly had, and honestly, that's what the point of a live letter is. They took the time to answer almost 90 questions, so I really can't complain. And I got the announcements that I wanted at the end. So let me know what you thought about some of the things here with the live letter. Are you looking forward to some of the job changes? What are your stances on the way that the jobs were changed for Final Fantasy XIV Heaven's Word? What are your thoughts about all these glamours and inventory space things and the Alexander Savage loot system or the Alexander Normal loot system? Let me know what your thoughts are on any Anything that's relevant in the comment section below. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm gonna go eat. I'm gonna see you guys next time. Until then, take care.